If I had asked you to tell me a Genesis car, a trendsetter that changed the face of the industry and brought something completely new to the market, you'd tell me a Lambo Mura or a Mini Cooper. But in India, we had a Genesis car, at least in terms of budget performance. And that was this, the Skoda VRS Mark I. However, this was a little later than the West. It came into India a little later than the West. It was a little slower than the West, but it was still the fastest thing that was made in India and sold in India. It also brought along itself a huge cult following that loved its tuning potential. And this is the driver's hub. So you best believe that this car is modded ass. Think of it this way, you've just bought yourself a Mercedes-Benz in 2005 and this pulls up next to you, a yellow sedan that looks pretty bland and not quite dramatic but the look, the lack of drama is exactly what makes this a perfect, perfect sleeper. Nothing flashy came stock apart from the colour. You see, this car was built for the masses that wanted to drive but couldn't really afford a sports car or even the commitment of a sports car. This is why this has such a good cult following even 15, 16, 17 years on after it's been discontinued. When we talk about this specific VRS, you can notice that now the car is on 17-inch uh, Paco rims with uh, Goodyear F1 tyres. If you look deeper, you've got a K-Sport big brake kit with a slotted disc, EDC yellow stuff brakes front and back because now at the rear, you get a slotted disc from Hawk Performance as well. And for the stance, you've got a Kony suspension, which is Kony dampers and HNR springs. The Mark 1 VRS has aged very beautifully. When we say that they don't make them like that anymore, it actually has some thought behind because just look at it. Modern car design is just way too aggressive, whereas this Mark 1 Octavia looks timeless and elegant. The VRS gets a few changes like a different front and rear bumper, a VRS spoiler and a different exhaust but in the case of this VRS, it is running a different dual exit exhaust. Open the hood and you can see the actual madness that is going down underneath. You get a front mounted intercooler that is rated to 400 horsepower from Toyo Sports, uh, pipe across air intake and most of the plumbing has been changed to forge plumbing which is fatter and much nicer. You've got a diverter valve from forge, you've got a turbo inlet pipe from forge and everything basically has now turned been, uh, been turned up to 11. Even the downpipe has a 2.5 inch downpipe now so more, perf uh, more performance out of that and all of that Sounds pretty impressive, but let's just see how it is when we take it for a spin. Now considering the age of the car, it feels pretty solid. Uh, mainly because it's got quite a lot of modern upgrades and it is uh, very well maintained. It's an N1 equipment and uh, an uh, KS Motorsports car. So the garages are very nice. But if you are in the market for a Mark 1 VRS, I'm very sad to inform that uh, this, suffers, this suffers from the Evo effect, which means that it is much more difficult to find a stock version of the car than a worked on version. And the problem with worked on versions of the cars are that you never know what is the hand uh, working on behind and that usually means that the life of the engine is kind of diminished because when you are working with a car and making it faster than stock you are going to be removing some of the life of the engine so it's very imperative that you choose the right car especially if you are getting a mark 1 vrs but if you strike gold like one of these you are in for the ride of your life. Uh, the owner of this car takes a lot of care of this and uh, he has also chosen his garages very wisely. Plus, his mods are also very wisely chosen. The gearbox has been upgraded with a lighter flywheel and a stronger clutch. Plus, 
you get a stage 2 APR tune which feels amazing and let me just show you when the turbo spools this thing shoots off like a rocket and that diverter valve makes it so dramatic with the little it's so much fun i love this car the power figures on this car are pretty impressive considering it is a car from 2004 with all of the current upgrades the owner is claiming the power figures to be around 220 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque which would have been mind bending back in 2004 2005 for indian roads the brakes are also ready to soak up the heat and provide you with that much needed stopping power and since the steering rack is hydraulic the feedback and response from the steering is very intuitive more importantly, the handling upgrades like the strut bar in the engine bay, the Kony suspension setup and the sticky tires makes for a car that handles very nicely. Yes, maybe the setup is a little bit too harsh for daily usage because of the stiff ride but come on, who is going to be daily driving a Mark 1 VRS? We are better off daily driving a Lamborghini Huracan than a Mark 1 VRS because the Mark 1 VRS isn't the most reliable of cars. The Mark 1 suffers from many problems like old rubber hoses failing, timing belt problems, oil leaks, coolant leaks and the works. Moreover, it is very difficult to identify the issue and once identified, you will find a plethora of other issues that need to be fixed. Yes, Mark 1 VRSs are quite cheap to buy, 2.5, 3 lakhs for a decent one, decent one with an asterisk, but people have now started to appreciate this gem of a car more and more. Thus, prices have started to go up. Most of the Mark 1 VRSs on sale today which are in running condition have been modified and the others which are on sale have problems which are as long as your monthly grocery list. So finding a stock decent condition Mark 1 VRS is not the easiest of things to do. But if you have the money, dedication, willpower to keep it running and keep the car in its glory then the Mark 1 VRS is one of the sickest project cars around.